And good evening, everyone. Richard Coverthwaite here for a belated edition, a belated September edition of St. Albans Today. Thanks for joining us on Northwest Access TV. Happy to have guests from St. Albans City and St. Albans Town. Marty Manahan, the Director of Operations and Business Development for the city, former mayor. Marty, good to see you. Kerry Johnson, the St. Albans Town Manager. Kerry. And Bruce Cheeseman, the St. Albans Town Select Board Chairman. And I, want, and I hope we didn't confuse our many and loyal viewers out there. Uh, ordinarily, we would have had this show last week, but the uh, Town Select Board had rescheduled their meeting from Labor Day to a week ago, Wednesday. So they've been very good about joining us here on the set. So we thought we would put the show off for a week so they could join us tonight, which they're doing. So we'll be back on our regular schedule next month. Uh, so the next show will be Wednesday, October 4th. Again, it's a live show, at least if you're watching us live. We love to get phone calls. 527-6449 is our regular number. I think I should start, Marty, with a boy, pretty nice story. I've got a Vermont business magazine in front of me. I'm not sure this is going to probably show up on the camera too much. It's a, a magazine, one of the many subscriptions I get. Got it in the mail, I guess, a couple days ago, but none other than St. Albans Mayor Liz Gamache on the cover with a, a very nice, detailed, in-depth story about the mayor. Uh, so I've got to think she's, uh, she'll buy maybe a few copies of this uh, magazine. But nice story about the mayor and obviously a lot of uh, attention being given to St. Albans downtown revitalization and issues like that. But uh, Personnel, but it, uh, when it comes to police is where the constraints fall in. Um, obviously, we've added officers over the years. Dispatch has taken on a bigger role with 911 being a PSAP center. So we've added uh, bodies there as well. It was, of course, 16th anniversary was just uh, two days ago. Right. Um, so it's uh, the other challenge is obviously the location next to the railroad tracks. That's always yeah. been a concern. We've got a brook that runs right behind the building that is a concern <clears throat> with flooding and whatnot. It's flooded that building a couple of times, so we obviously need to make a change there, and, and we're working on it. And I think the plan we're working on now, if it uh, comes together, should be a should be a good location. A possibility, again, this has come up on previous shows, possibility for the fund, a solo site comes right to my mind anyway. Is that yeah. a possibility? We've at looked at point? that. We've looked at that, and that is a possibility. If we did something there, we would probably try to include public works as well. Yeah. And then maybe uh, utilize public works for recreation right. um, more to do something there. We all also are looking at uh, the pool doing a study on the pool, the condition of the pool, and what it's going to cost to make repairs or replace that. Um, so there's a lot of lot of moving pieces to it. And the pool has a pool? The pool has issues? Or? Yeah, I mean, it's 20, 25 years old. Um, it, they've done a good job, I think, over the years maintaining it. Public Works does a fantastic job uh, closing it down and opening it up and taking care of the issues that arise during the wintertime and keeps it going for the summer season. But um, just the age of the facility is, I think, what's catching up to it at this point. So, yeah. And it gets used a lot. They have, obviously, a great uh, swim team here locally. They've, they've held uh, the swim meet, uh, regional swim meet here uh, a month or so ago. Had over 1,000 people uh, attend down at that facility. So um, there's obviously opportunities that you can take advantage of if you've got the right facility. You mentioned dispatching briefly. Uh, you folks are dispatching for 
just about everybody, in, in, at least in Franklin County or and well beyond that? Yeah, in fact, I think Franklin we just... Franklin and Grand Isle? Yeah, we've uh, Grand Isle, Franklin County. Um, there may be one or two in Chittenden County that we oh. dispatch for. Uh, we just, I believe, took on the sheriff. I was going to say you picked up the sheriff's department also. Signed a contract with the sheriff, yeah. That's so, um, yeah, it's certainly a regional <clears throat> facility. That's and, nice. Flipping over to the town, Bruce, biggest issue in St. Paul. What's the biggest issue you're dealing with right now? In, in oh, Gary? gosh. <clears throat> hard, hard to pick? <clears throat> uh, you know, we've got several issues going on. We don't have anything that's, I don't think that you can consider real big. I mean. Let's go, let's um, go back. Uh, we talk about it every month, uh, the town-owned Brigham Road property. I think when I last left you on that, you said uh, there were a couple of parties very interested in acquiring all or some of that parcel. I think on the last show you said, uh, a party was under contract with that. Anything more you can tell us about that? No, actually I can't. That's that, about all I can tell you. Is that, is that still accurate? Is it still under contract? It's still accurate, yes. When, when, when do you think, when will you have <clears throat> something or carry news you can talk about on that? Would you guess or do you think? I'd say six months or so. Yeah. And maybe that, that far down the road, huh? It might be. Interesting. Carrie, what's, uh, again, you're obviously involved in all, everything going on in the town. What's the biggest issue? What's your most, I don't know, time-consuming issue these days? Well, I'm not sure our biggest issue is the same as our, my most time-consuming issue. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think one of the, the things that we're trying to get the word out is that we're actually doing an infrastructure study in-house. We have a, a pretty involved steering committee that's um, been meeting now three months, and we're evaluating our town hall and our Department of Public Works, um, just the structures themselves and trying to decide what and how we're going to serve the public going forward, you know, in the next 20, 30, 50 years. Um, and so I think one of the things we're looking at is should, should they move? Should they be together? Um, and maybe working really hard to, to answer those questions and provide some guidance to the select board. So that's, that's exciting. Rather than the, you know, we get we do a lot of policy updates and um, obviously answering and responsive responsive to the, the citizens. But this is a this is something a little more interesting, and um, I think it's past due. You know, we need to look at a town hall that is accessible for all, and we need to look at a Department of Public Works that is not on lakefront property. Um, so we're taking some active steps, and hopefully have something next year for voters to to look at. Uh, possibly in March, possibly in March town meeting. That might be a little aggressive. I think it's more likely to be November, but we're we're shooting for next year. Yeah, Bruce, you wanted. And you know, in. you know, Richard, it hasn't changed for me. My big, my big issue with town is water and sewer, and I'd like to see something, uh, you know, come about that yeah. either either with the with the city or going out on our own, one or the other. Anything, anything <clears throat> new to report? Of course, there's still pending there really, litigation. There really isn't. I, I. Um, we, we are talking about, you know, uh, giving uh, Dominic a call and getting back together with him at some point. That uh, hasn't happened. You haven't gotten together with him for a while? We haven't. I think it's been probably, oh, man, I think three or four months None. since yeah, we last no, talked. But, no. um, yeah. um, you know, um, we've, we've made we've had some pretty good discussions. I think we've made a little bit of leeway in, in both of our favors, both the town and the city. And um, I would really like to see our talks continue. Because uh, we all know that the quickest way for us to get into the water and sewer business is to, uh, you know, try to do something with the city. You know, if we could come to some sort of an agreement that benefits us both, uh, we're both in the water and sewer business the next day. Although you've, you've also, I guess as Kerry touched on, you're also taking a look at possibly dealing with that issue yourself, seeing what, what options are out there for the... We are. It sure, sure sounds like it'd be extremely expensive to go, to go, you know, just with the town on that issue. Would it well, not? not only is it extremely expensive, but it's very time consuming. Um, you know, if we went out on our own, and I'm not saying that we won't, I'm just say, saying that if we do go out on our own, it could be two or three years down the road before we saw anything. You know, building a plan is one thing, but then you've got to think about all the infrastructure that goes in the ground and everything after that. Mm. So it would be it would be uh, it would be a good two or three years from the time we made a decision. Marty, your th your thoughts again, former mayor? You you spent more than a 
more than a little time dealing with this issue. I'm sure you can flash. We talked many times in the past about all the money both communities have spent on legal bills, and I guess those bills are still adding up. Uh, any any realistic hope that you can, you know, solve resolve this issue after after decades of it being unresolved? There's been a lot of smart people that have worked on it, a lot smarter than I have, and continue to work on it. So hopefully they'll find a solution. Uh, you would think there would be a solution in there somewhere, but it seems like every time we get close, uh, players change, and we yeah. have to go back and start from square one again. So that doesn't we've been sound. close. We've been close before. Yeah. At, at this point, I mean, you feel you're not at, at this moment. You're not particularly close at this moment, or have you got? I'm not. I'm not as intimately involved in I, it as the others have been. I yeah. think the the system that we have in place now, as far as the city's concerned, is working fine, and we're yeah. we're fine with you know progressing forward with with what is in place now with the affiliation fee and developers don't seem to. We haven't had any developers come in and question it or challenge it or be upset that they have to participate in it. Do so you think so that that's worked that's worked reasonably well? We've had yeah, we we've, we've had allocations it seems like on a regular basis at yeah. council meetings, allocation requests, so huh. Bruce, what's your take on the affiliation? Are you hearing Well, I, my Martin? take on affiliation is that you know, I, he's right, you know, people are there's it's still there for them and there are contractors that are uh, people that are willing to pay the fee. But I'm I'm sure that uh, the ultimate fix would be not having to pay that fee, and uh, you know being able to get in to uh, get water and sewer where they're not only for the businesses but and their homes at a at a uh, lesser price. Marty, we're talking a big voter, city voters. Uh, you've done very well before city voters getting approval for I think I think everything for a few years, including a a big sewer. The town should be so lucky, as I see Kerry. Smile in there. Uh, the sewer bond was that like 18, 19 million sewer bond again. Just over 18, I think. Just over 18, decisively approved by voters. Uh, I guess what last last March, March yeah. town meeting. Yeah. Was that work on? Is that work underway? Yep. Yeah. So they have prepared the uh, documents to go out to bid, and I think the bids are going to be going out uh, within the next 30 to 60 days. Yeah. And with anticipation of the work beginning early next year. Is this a is this a good a pretty good time to get major work like that, or have you got a feel for that in terms of how busy contractors we've, are and stuff? Yeah, we've uh, we've obviously done a lot of work and had to put a lot of bids out recently. the The Federal Street project was one that uh, we put out later than we had uh, hoped to get out. The state had uh, made us jump through a few more hoops than we had anticipated. Mm -hmm. We had. Uh, <clears throat> been delayed with the railroad negotiations in their land, so we ended up putting that out late and there was two bidders right, on it. Really, just, um, just two bidders, huh? Yeah, and it's kind of ironic because one of the contractors we suggested bid was told by the state that they weren't big enough to bid on the job. Oh. So then SD Ireland got the bid and subcontracted it out to the contractor that was not big enough to bid on the job. Oh. So. Um, there was obviously some money on the table there in order for them to do that. But huh. So when it comes to this, this is a pretty big project. There's probably going to be companies not only within the state, but uh, we've been contacted, I've been contacted by a company in Maryland that's interested in bidding really? on it. Again, um, on, the, on the sewer, on, on the, the sewer, wastewater plant. Yeah, upgrades, wow. yeah. So I would imagine that there would be some pretty big players that would bid on that, and it would be pretty competitive. Is this, among other things, obviously there are a lot of... Uh, issues with that upgrade is increasing the capacity part part of that or or not it, it will it will increase the capacity as a result of the upgrades that we're doing yeah. um but it's more to uh there's a lot of old equipment it's a lot of infrastructure upgrades um so as as you become more efficient with the equipment and stuff it'll increase the capacity somewhat but uh -huh. that's not the main driver of it and how, how long a time frame? Are we talking uh, like a few years of work here? Probably or? about 18 months, I 18 believe. 18 months yeah. or so. Yeah. Interesting. Again, our number, folks, if you happen to be watching us live, love to hear from you. 527-6449 for the, again, belated September edition of St. Albans Today. Uh, you folks touched on it before. Kerry, can you picture 
We'll, we'll, who knows if you'll be town manager 20 years down the road. Ha, but can you picture not still, still, <laughs> being, still being in St. Albans Town Hall at that point? As, uh, if you need to, if the, if the you know, if folks want to stay, stay put, can you picture still being in that building? Or is that pretty hard to picture? Bruce is shaking his ah, head no. That's, that's, that's really hard to picture. I think really it's difficult there because we have some physical constraints and it's actually not near where the bulk of our, our people live or work at this point. So. Yeah. Um, it's, it's tough. One of the big things is, is it is an ADA compliant, right. so you know you're limiting the uh, number of people that can but you're not utilize it. You're not under huge pressure to make it. Are you, are you under any pressure to oh, make we're it? We're under ADA pressure compliant? ourselves because we want to open it up to the entire community. Right. But you're not under outside pressure. No. no. Marty, just flipping to City Hall. I mean, that was an issue with St. Albans City Hall, was it not? Were you under outside pressure to make it compliant or not particularly? Well, the only pressure you are is if you start the renovation yeah. and it reaches a certain threshold and then you're required to oh, really? do the ADA compliant. That's kind of ironic. We, so if, we you were in, if you don't bother renovating, you don't have anything to no, worry about. No, if you, you, you grandfathered in or something. Uh, yeah, you're huh. making a non-conforming issue less non-conforming. Um, right. But we, we were in the same position. We had, obviously, all our offices were upstairs. Mm -hmm. We had a... Uh, chair that went up the stairs that was used very seldom um, and it puts the individual you know and in, it's just not the right atmosphere yeah, yeah Richard so, there's no place for us to grow you know we can't what we have for parking is yeah. what we have for parking as the town grows and the needs grow yeah uh, and the services grow um, we've we've got to be able to expand that facility yeah and uh, not only is a lot small the uh, we have a mound system in there you know that's probably yeah good for another, I don't know, hopefully another eight to 10 years, maybe. And we all know that's an expensive thing to replace. It's kind of and we sounds don't have like, the land either. Yeah, your, your years are numbered there. So. Years are very numbered. <clears> and, and, and again, I realize you're looking at this. You, and, any places right now jumping out at you, which would be uh, make more sense to have a, the, nec it, the next town hall? Kerry's on the infrastructure right. committee. Kerry, so any, any, I mean, you're, I, well, I, it's I actually it's unlikely we're gonna share that because if someone was to find out the town gotcha. is looking, the <laughs> price might go up. <laughs> I don't want to talk about that now, huh? But it's amazing how that happens. It's amazing how that we're at a disadvantage if we do that. But I mean, we are looking at it Under, seriously um, because we just know that going forward, if we're going to build something, it should last for a long time. You know, yeah. generations from us should yeah. be the ones using it. This is what we want to leave and leave our as a, a legacy, not a building that that you can only use for 10 or 20 years. marty any any room right in the middle of what about st albans city hall it's right in the middle of st albans town not not right. in the oh, town of sure. course but in the middle of the we town. have a you project across the street from city hall that we might be able to negotiate mm -hmm. fonda fonda might be available yeah, yeah. That'd be yeah, great. That would. bruce did you want to jump yeah there? you know another thing too richard it we're facing with the town hall is uh running out of vault space right yes. that's a very important which again issue. was a city issue before your <clears> renovation <throat> marty right yeah Although, the so is that still is that still an issue? Or no, it's not a okay. it's not an issue. But moving forward, it's um, going to be less of an issue because everything is going electronic okay. and on the right. cloud and stuff. So, when we okay. built when we did the renovation at City Hall, we actually put a new vault on the other side of the building and then put another vault in the basement yeah. as a result of just for stabilization yeah. and everything, and it worked out. So we have yeah. plenty of vault space. So that's a good point. It, mm -hmm. it may be if you can hang down there long enough that it, that that's one issue that might kind of go away. Well, what well, we actually have heard that you still have to have a. Um, there's a call coming in. Like that. No, we've got a call. Great. Thank. Thank you for telling me that. Go ahead, caller. Thanks for calling St. Albans today. Fire away. Go ahead, caller. Boy, we can. If you can hear us, which I hope you can, you. which I guess you can, we can't hear you. It's got some land. Well, Joanne, I don't know what to say. Should I tell this person to call back or? Oh, boy, we've had phone issues here for a few weeks. We thought they were resolved. Maybe not. Uh, call or maybe give us at least another shot or anybody else out there. Sorry yeah, about that. Yeah, if you we did, can't hear you. If you did call, we could not hear you. Sorry about that. The gremlins still, still seem to be uh, after us here. But anyway, a point I Sorry. wanted to make yeah. about vault space yeah. was I heard from our town clerk that you have to at least have a copy of those on premise. People may not need to, to so pause. Still pause may them. need uh, a, cop a copy on premise. Right. I, I just heard the phone ring. I'm seeing if I see any. Uh, try try again here, Joanne. Is this a call coming in for us? Yeah. Caller, go go ahead. We're hoping we can hear you this time. Go ahead. Boy, again, we're hearing nothing. Caller, I, I apologize if you're hearing us, which I guess you are, we're not hearing you. 
So I so guess we. Okay, there you go. Okay, we, we're we're we're, yeah. get, we're catching and again, folks. Yeah, you keep, finally got my voice. We have, yep. David, how you doing? We hear you. Not bad. Well, I'm glad to see Federal Street is really looking a lot better there, and uh, it, uh, it's going to be good when all the paving's done. You know, which will probably be September, or late September or October. You know, I'm glad to see that finally come to an end. And I want to thank the select board and the town manager and the town employees, the highway department, and our park uh, people. The, the Bay Park is outstanding. A lot of people are using it and walking. And I think that is uh, very good because that park is a wonderful park. And the only gripe I got, in which I'll, I'll address it to both uh, Mr. Cheeseman and to Kerry, is last year I, I asked for a portalette down there at the Bay Park, and people are doing their job inside our uh, picnic shelter down there. So uh, I would like to see for 90 days a portalette down there. So that way people don't use uh, the inside of the uh, picnic area for uh, doing their job because we have got such a beautiful park. I'd like to see that down there. And I'm hoping that Mr. Cheeseman will make that happen. Um, anything else for us, David? No, other than that, I, I'm glad to see that the, the town and city are working together. You know, I know that water and sewer district will... All of us, uh, including them with the panel there, uh, we'll all be dead and buried before that thing ever comes to pass. But, you know, maybe sometime in the future when uh, new people come to the town and the city, maybe we'll, we'll see that water and sewer district. Very, very good. Thank you very much. Thanks for calling. And former selectman David McWilliams checking in again, our number 527-6449. Bruce, what, I think that's a, a fair point. I, I'm at the Bay Park a good couple, three times a week. I realize the park's officially closed now, mm -hmm. but again, we're talking a, another month or two when that park will get a fair amount of use. What about a portable toilet? You know, we can definitely make that happen. Um, I mean, that, that strikes and, me uh, as someone who uses a park, I think I think David's raising a, a very good point. He, he, brought, he did bring up a good point, and I'll bring that to the attention of the uh, rest of the select board. Um, the concern, obviously, with something like that, the obvious concern is van vandalism, which I realize happens. But uh, Well, actually, our concern was sending mixed messages. The board was kind of oh, mixed yeah. on that because because our park is closed, so we lock the gates. We don't encourage. We, if you want to go there, great. There's, we're not going to write tickets, but so you're not you're not really encouraging not people encouraging to go there. People to stay for a long period of time because it is closed. So yeah. the board didn't want when it was talked about last time. Of course, they could change their mind. Yeah. Of course, um, again, but that's why we did not have a, a portlet yeah. down there. Yeah. Um, but you know, you know, it's kind of hard to keep people out after we made it as accessible as it is yeah. today. And, uh, you know, we'd like to encourage people to use it and uh, use it properly. Yeah. Um, so, you know, no, I guess we'll, we'll bring yeah, it up again on, I guess on Monday I, night. I guess there are a couple of sides to that. Of course, I love, uh, I love the Bay Park. I'm there, as I said, a couple, three times a week. I walk there a lot. I'm at Kilcare more. Kilcare is maybe my favorite place on the planet. The state folks haven't always been clear, but for the record, I'm sure you folks know this. Most people probably do. Kilcare and the other state park. There might be a few state parks still open till Columbus Day. Mm. Kilcare, Burden, Woods, they're officially closed now. But for the record, the state parks are open year round. They're obviously not open with facilities year round. There are no facilities at right. Kilcare. Mm -hmm. You know, the restrooms are not open now. But do they but have the, portalettes? They, they don't. You can oh. you can certainly make the same point about Kilcare and the state parks. Some of them may. All I can really speak to is Kilcare. My guess is the state parks are closed. Don't don't have them. You know, you and they had probably the same concern, but they, mm -hmm. they are officially open. Sometimes they're not as clear about that. I, I mean, going back 10, 15 years in my case, I would go down to Kilcare off season vaguely wondering, boy, you know, am I going to get arrested for yeah. walking around Kilcare? And I finally, you know, looked into the issue. And again, all state parks are open year round, but again, without facilities. So it's kind of some of that same well, you, issue. You know, when you take an 80 degree day like today, sure. and you got a beautiful area like that to go yeah. out and enjoy, yeah. And it's kind of hard to resist it. Yeah. And maybe you brought up a good point. Maybe we should think about, you know, um, maybe you should do just, just maybe do, or should. do or do what the state does for that matter, at least for a couple months and, you know, beautiful fall months, maybe a little earlier. Yeah. To say that, you know, the park is open, but it doesn't have facilities if it still doesn't. So well, state take, parks, take they, note of that. They close the beach, but they leave the park itself open. It's right. still accessible. Yeah. There's no lifeguards or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, there are no lifeguards in, in summer, for that no. matter, at, at, Kil at Kilcare anyway. 
Anyway, something, something to think about. Yeah. Marty, I want to go back to, I started the show just saying Mayor Gamash getting some very nice ink in the Vermont Business Magazine story and also giving a lot of information, obviously, about the downtown St. Albans revitalization. I want to give you a chance to talk about that. Just for the record, it's not like that happened magically uh, on the first day of uh, Mayor Gamash's tenure. You certainly, and feel free to toot your own horn, you certainly laid some of the groundwork for that. And for that matter, maybe going back to your predecessor, maybe Mayor Delorier. So yeah, I think... Um, I want to just make sure that, you know, folks don't think, hey, you know, St. Albans finally got it together the last few years here. This certainly there's some a lot of history here and goes back to the efforts of her predecessors, right. including yourself. No, I appreciate that. And I think a lot of it did start with uh, Bill Chaffee and Pete Delorier oh, um, way before I got on the council. Yeah. Um, strategic pieces of land were purchased while I was on the council. We purchased other pieces of land in that downtown core. It was always the vision of uh, Bill and Pete to do something with that uh, core lot. I mean, certainly downtown parking garage. So didn't, wasn't I reading about that in city reports de decades yeah, ago? Yeah, once we in have, a it's interesting, we have revitalization reports that date back to the 70s. Yeah. And okay. as early as uh, I think 87, it mentions um, parking garage in the downtown core. Um, so again, we, previous administrations, and, and, and that's what happens, you know, people pick up the ball and keep running with it and carrying it further down the field. Um, we were fortunate uh, when, you know, we negotiated a settlement with Jeff Davis and Walmart. Uh, we had a building when I was mayor and Dominic was there when we had a building on Lemna Drive that uh, NCSS was using. They no longer needed it, so we were able to sell that. So we ended up getting some money there as seed money for our development fund. So, and as a result of those two, you were able to leverage more and be able to do some of these projects. And obviously the earmark that, one of the last earmarks that was given was uh, through Peter Welch. And, and that was under, you were, you were, when you were still mayor at that point. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and that started the streetscape. That was the beginning of the streetscape. We did the, the block in front of Jeff Seafood between Bank and Congress. And there was a strategic plan behind that to show what we could do with, um, you know, with the TIF and with uh, the development fund and stuff, and um, we were able to get the TIF district uh, um, appointed to us, and so we were one of the last ones to be able to achieve a TIF district. One of state. what about like eight in the state or so? Yeah, seven or Burlington like has that? Burlington has like three or four. In of course, they've different. got one for the Moran. Boy, talk about it. What seems like a doomed project. Yeah. I think they were looking for TIF for increment for tax increment financing, looking that was going to be a major TIF project to renovate the Moran plant. Sounds like the latest of countless number of proposals has gone by the board. Yeah, and that's, you know, we... Tough, tough project. Yeah, obviously. and it is tough, and you want to make sure you do it right, and you're yeah. better off vetting them, and if, if something sticks, you know, go with it, but... They'll come up with the right plan there. They've, it's a good, yeah. it's a good piece of property. The contamination is the tough yeah. part. You know, any any downtown has what they call urban fill yeah. is contamination. So the legislature needs to deal. They did some legislation last year with Burlington in mind, being able to just haul it off site and keep it within Burlington. We had to haul the urban right. fill from our downtown out of, out core over state? to Plattsburgh, over to Plattsburgh, Plattsburgh. and uh, you know it's costly to. And we could have, we we had an opportunity to. Highgate, the brick factory, was going to, they, they shut down. They had, part of their Act 250 permit was, yeah. required them to fill in their hole. They had a oh, hole really? that they were digging clay out of. Really? It was probably 200 feet deep. Huh. We, we were working on a proposal to bring our urban fill there. They would have capped it. It would have had 100 feet of fill over the top of it. And huh. didn't, didn't work, didn't work right, out. It huh? didn't. The, the right, decision right. makers decided not to allow it. So we ended up hauling it over to Plattsburgh. So... Um, so, you know, there was a lot of stuff. And then when Liz came on, you know, we had a good team in place with Chip and Dom and um, we had a good relationship with the governor. Governor Shumlin was a yeah. key player in yeah. allowing us to uh, sell the state building. We originally went into that plan thinking that we were going to sell that to INS. Hmm. And, you know, as you get into it, you realize we were talking with INS when we really should have been talking the the developer who owned it was out of New York City. Really? He was a huge huh. investment, real estate investor, and in hindsight, he, he was probably interested in it. But really? when we were talking INS, INS said, no, we have no interest in expanding at this point. So then we switched gears, and Milan, we put it out to bid. Uh, INS didn't respond. Milan did. 
Huh. And, uh, and that, of course, so it worked huge. out well. But my land, the key to the some Absolutely. of the TIF stuff with it. And it was lucky. It was fortunate, and, even with the co-op. The co-op in my land was also. contributing to the TIF before oh. we even got the TIF going. Oh. So you, we were able to again leverage that early money. Typically, with the TIF, you put it out to vote. You get approval for the cap on the on the bond. And then you borrow the money to do the project. Well, we had money coming into the TIF in order to start some of the, and we couldn't have done, we couldn't have moved the state building on Federal Street without putting in a parking garage. Huh. And we couldn't have built a hotel on Lake Street without having a parking garage. Right. Now our parking garage is full. You, I mean, is that, is it, we is probably really? should have put two more decks on it. Really, but, really. Yeah, it's, uh, we've got 365 spaces. The ta really? state takes 170. The, the hotel, hotel of course, gets takes uh, 100. 100. And it's, it's unique in the sense that typically your hotel user is using it off hours. The state is using it, you know, the opposite hours. So you can yeah. double up on some of those spaces. But yeah. we've got developing development happening uh, on Main Street. The TD Bank building is under gonna, going under renovation. Uh, so Boy, we're, there's a ton there's of space. Of, we're not talking a lot of uh, employees in that building these days. No, no, and they, uh, and and that again was a project that um, we went, we we looked at that building a couple of times, tried to locate a tenant in there, hmm. uh, weren't able to do it. We called a developer, brought a developer in, gave him some ideas of what we'd like to see there. He ended up negotiating a deal and buying the building from TD Bank. He's going to keep DD oh, Bank that, on the ground floor. Oh, is that right? They don't, they don't own the building anymore. No, so they sold the building, exactly. and um, so they're going to keep TD. They've negotiated the lease to keep them on the ground floor. They're going to open up another retail space and oh. then renovate the upper floors. Oh, really? Interesting. So, and, and, so, and a lot of other people living downtown are parking in the garage. And, so and the hotel seems to be off to a pretty good start? The hotel is exceeding their expectations. They've, right. they've booked out for the last, I think, nine weeks, I was told. Really? They've booked out between Tuesday and Sunday. Uh, they've been turning people away. Is that away. no surprise to you? The hotel certainly has had its critics out there, some of whom I know well, but you were pretty, you were pretty confident. Yeah, I mean, was, it's... These folks obviously didn't just jump into St. Albans right. out of the blue. They've done three feasibility <laughs> studies. All right. And the bank wouldn't lend money without right. having an additional feasibility study done. Right. So, in the, in, so we signed a contract with Jeff Davis, Peak CM, he contracts out a management group, um, American Resort Management. They sign a contract with Hilton in order to sign the Hampton flag. So there's a lot of money involved. Yeah. Everybody's obviously getting a piece of the pie. Hilton came up and looked at the site and loved it. That was, that, it was exactly what their model for downtown hotels. Obviously, Akita got a very good deal from the city, too, obviously, was part, part right, of this. Right, they got the land for a dollar. Right, but, I mean, they still invested over $10 million. Did building. they really? Yeah. Really? Um, and the advantage we have is we've got a minimum assessed value when, they, when they're built out. Okay. And so we have that contributing to the TIF to um, pay for the garage and all the other upgrades. We're fin we finished Lake Street last year with the upgrades there. We did new sidewalks and granite curbs and bump outs and everything. Mm -hmm. And now we're finishing up Federal Street. Uh, hopefully in the next year or two we'll be able to do Kingman Street and that'll take care of pretty much Kingman the Street's court. looming as the next uh, street streetscape. Right. So the council approved a preliminary plan at their council meeting Monday night. Yeah. Um, we've had discussions with businesses there and have floated concepts by them and have settled in pretty much on one concept, getting rid of the diagonal parking, creating uh, parallel parking, and uh, widening the sidewalk on the south side yeah. and, you know, granite curbs and trees and ornamental lights and flags and hmm. um, and now the challenge is maintaining it yeah. keeping it in good repair and you know it's frustrating when you put all this money into your downtown and everything and you go by and see somebody has taped a taped a lawn sale sign to your ornamental yeah. light and you can't get the tape off it because they've used duct tape and yeah. so but it's all part of the education yeah. of it and we'll get there it's Bruce anything of note in terms of development new businesses in the town or carry in the mm -hmm. town you know the the biggest thing that you know the thing that I'm looking forward to is the uh, opening of the marina come next May I think that's going to be our catalyst to get and, that, and that's the plan that sounds pretty solid oh yeah yeah that's uh, 
That's what we've been told, correct? Right? Touched on parking. I know they. I know they've done some work on some surface parking across from it. Is that a parking's been a concern in the bay? You touched on it briefly before. Any 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 thoughts? Are you looking to do something to? Can you create some more parking down there? It's going to be kind of tough to. And of course, that parking. gets into the state. You, I know you've. I guess talked to the state right. about possibly taking over yep. part of Route 36. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, it's going to be kind of tough to create any parking on that curb down there. Yeah. You know where the creamy stand is and people of course the bay, the, park. the bay park has tons of parking uh, it certainly does and, and you know stuff. the thing of it is is that when you see somebody park in that curve go over to the creamy stand yeah. get themselves a creamy and then walk down to the park after yeah you know you kind of why not wonder why, not why we're the going park? through the stuff that we're going through i personally don't want to see any parking on the curve yeah. i don't want to ruin a view yeah. i don't want to ruin you know what we what we've got there yeah. You know, the green, uh, the, the green that's right there and everything. Yeah. I, I honestly believe that I don't think that we could come up with a plan, a safe plan for parking on that curve, no matter well, what we did. Assuming the Bay Park's open, assuming the gate's not closed, maybe some signs saying parking available nearby or something. But Certainly, again, yeah. for mm-hmm. most of the year at this point, the gate's going to be closed unless you change that situation. It's true. Yeah, we had a, ro- ro- a road safety audit done. Um, the proposal was possibly to provide um, a little more guidance as to and control on the intersection. So basically, put some curbs up on each each of the four corners, make mm-hmm. it a four-way stop, um, put some more crosswalks in. Um, which <clears throat> the owner of Bayside, Chuck Lowe, has said he would um, be fine with. In other words, so in front of the that restaurant on the de- on the deck. We, yeah. There would be no more parking. It would be a green oh, space. Really? Okay. So to formalize some of those um, entry and exit points would would assist with some of the, the things we want from that intersection. Yeah. But some of the other things I think that are exciting yeah. that often people don't talk about is we have a, a good deal of investment being done in our industrial park. Yeah. I mean, Milan, Ben and Jerry's, and Peerless are all expanding in the next 12 months significantly, like oh. millions of dollars. So. It's really, it's pretty exciting that we're getting this kind of investment and almost every single one of those it, expansions involves additional jobs. So, How much of a presence does Milan have in the town park? It's not significant, but it is one of them. And, and they're, it's growing, they're going, growing apparently. Right, yep, and they're going to expand. Um, so it's, that's, that's pretty exciting. And our, and our little industrial park, I shouldn't say little, but it's a different type of industrial park on the north part of town near Franklin, it, Franklin Park West is also expanding. Huh. Um, Channel 15 is, is going to, new home is going right, to be we're there. Up there. I'm hearing, I'm hearing yep. groundbreaking soon. It's and been... there's one or two other people that are seriously looking yeah. at spots up there. So yeah. there, there is expansion in the town, which is, which is good news. Of course, the Ben and Jerry's expansion, that's well, I think they hope to have that finished by the end, end of the year, November or so, in the uh, next couple of months, I think. I think they're working by the end of the year anyway. I think so. I, I, you never know because obviously construction, usually there's a few delays. So yeah. I, I don't remember what their final date yeah. is. You know, expansion of the existing buildings, uh, companies is great. I mean, yeah. it's really fantastic. But <clears throat> ultimately to see a new company come in sure. would be, you know, would be uh, really good. We haven't had a new company in that part it's for been a, while, a number huh? of years. Yeah. Peerless, of course, has a presence there doing there while they're expanding. Mm-hmm. They've got a presence out at the old Energizer plant, yeah. right? Temporarily, yeah. I assume, or yeah. storage. Storage, storage. Is that any, one of- any more news on the future of the old Energizer plant? Again, Peerless is making some use of it now, but uh, we really haven't heard no. anything. Yeah. Don't have any news to report. And it seems like we've all it seems like we've voiced surprise a bit over the years that. Well, Walmart hasn't, you know, doesn't have some more company out there. It seemed to be an expectation that once they finally fought their way into town, that they'd have mm-hmm. some company out there, but nothing, uh, not hearing anything out not that way. Not hearing anything. Uh, no, we're not hiding anything. No one's come forward recently. Uh, no. You know, and, and having a, a, a J.L. Davis was telling us that uh, basically they're having the same problem up in Newport, you know. Where funny Walmart funny you mentioned Newport. I drove through downtown yeah. Newport a few hours ago. Of course, the hole, uh, the infamous hole in downtown is still there. Yeah, and you know, if you take a look at, at the, you know, the scary factor is, if you listen to the news and you see what's going on in the world with all these malls closing down. Yeah. I mean, look what they're doing in Essex. Yeah. The mall up in Essex, I mean, they're turning that into basically 
residential homes now. All right. Limited retail space on first floors. You're, but you're right, that's a big national story. Mall, it is. Malls it, sounds like they're closing by the day almost. Yeah. Retail's changing. Look, at, changing. look at Amazon buying right. Whole Foods. I mean, you can sit yeah. in the comfort of your living room and yeah. order something and it'll be on your doorstep the next day. Right. You know, people, the yeah. Kevin Smith Sports Connections and those places are showrooms now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so downtowns are becoming more entertainment centers and niche yeah. shops and stuff. But uh, people that are in retail business have a tough job. In, that, that's for sure. You know, I was, I was out in Williston, yeah. out in Blair Park uh, a couple of weekends ago on a Saturday afternoon, a nice day. Yeah. Where well, I used to live there. We lived Is in uh, Lamplight Willis, Acres. Williston? Uh, behind Blair Park. And okay. that place was hustling. <clears throat> I mean, it was a beehive of activities. Yeah. I was there a couple of weekends ago, and I was amazed yeah. how quiet it was out there. Yeah, really. But Marty, as we talk about downtown, how the health of downtown, how, how do you think downtown's fair? Again, for retail, it's obviously it's yeah, tough, it's always tough a Yeah, it's, it's always a battle. Yeah. You Typically, you have family-owned yeah. retail shops that are um, being manned by family members, and yeah. it's a burnout situation and yeah. tough... Uh, you know, we're fortunate that we have the ones we have that have really played an important role in events downtown. We've got a strong merchants committee that meets weekly. Um, you know, we've it, it's an ebb and flow. We've got the build a bagel closed up. Oh, is that uh, I didn't, a month or so ago? That's, that's funny. I, I didn't notice that, but I was. Well, thinking, that's one of the problems, Richard. See, uh, you di you didn't notice it because you I'm, haven't been there. I'm down, <laughs> down there. In fact, I'm down there once. I am down there pretty often. But it's funny you mentioned that because that makes me think of Subway, where I went yeah. in with my buddy Alex to eat maybe a week or so ago. Uh, and and they, no, they've been closed for been closed probably for three months. Really? And behind the time. And it's yeah. interesting. We we I had a conversation. Did with you know the that? Did you know that, that was happening? Yep. Uh, no, they mm -hmm. Monday morning she decided to close well, up shop. Lily, Lily Ganesh, of course, and it was busy. Right, when really? you went in there, it was busy. And have you spoke? Had, the, did you, well, have, have you spoken I, to her? We have spoken with her, and there was she was huh. talking about the competition. Well, she owns two of the competitors, so yeah. um, that was kind of tough to hear. Yeah. But and then parking is always, you know, an yeah. issue. And if you can't park directly in front of the store, it's different than going in a shopping center and yeah. going to walk halfway across the parking lot but yeah. um, so we've had conversations with we've 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 got a conversation going with the proprietor down in Burlington uh, to look to come up here um, we're working on a project across the street from City Hall we've signed an MOU on that property with a developer oh, really? that oh. if we can get that to work that would bring in two grade A retail uh, really? businesses and then oh. a grade A office space up top well, so uh, it just takes a while to percolate, and, and you know, you, the... you mentioned all that, but I was talking to a family from that I know from uh, from the Cape, and they were telling me that they were up here a couple of weekends ago, and how beautiful downtown St. Albans is, yeah, and how great it is to go into little mom and pop mm -hmm. stores, the shops and stuff. And I actually think huh. they're making a bit of a comeback. Mm -hmm. It's the bigger stores that are taking a hike going down a pike, but the little mm -hmm. mom and pop stores are coming back. The hotel has certainly played a key role in that. If yeah. you go down on Sunday and see the number of people walking throughout downtown, um, it's, it's pretty impressive and you can tell a lot of them are from the hotel. The, uh, the, the old Berno building on Lake Street yeah. was just recently purchased. They, they received a historical tax credit oh. for that building. We're probably gonna be giving them a, uh, we're gonna propose to the council a facade grant for oh. that. Again, that's key retail space yeah. right across from the hotel. When you said the hotel played a key role just in getting some foot traffic yeah. uh, just on weekends you know, especially. 84 yeah. rooms you potentially have 160 new people in your downtown yeah. every every day. So that, that's, that's how? Yeah that and, and they don't have a, they don't have a restaurant that was part of our agreement with them is that oh, is they that wouldn't right? build an internal restaurant and it's put yeah. people out into the you know Mimo has has mentioned he's he's increased business uh, one yeah. fed Jeff Seafood. I mean, Dana's barbershop, I think, said that he, yeah. he was seeing a few more people Different, every yeah. single oh, week. Is that right? Yeah. 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 So the hotel, the hotel's kind of helped I countering hear. kind of that trend. Yeah, I think there. so. Yeah. I the mean, farmers market brings in brings a yeah. lot of food. Farmers traffic. market sure farmers, looks like yeah. it's pretty busy. Yeah. yeah. She does. Uh, Robin Morrow is the manager of that market huh. and does a great job. And 
So downtown kind of means somewhat somewhat mixed, like I said. Like as I you think said, it, overall, I would I would say it's probably an A minus. Um, All right. We've got you know the Bill Bagel space is open, and then the space we huh. have across the street, and then the old subway space. Yeah. Other than that, um, it's it's pretty full. Yeah. And I think the ones that are there seem to be doing well. Yeah. Uh, as the crow flies, what a yarn. Um, Real City Bay Market Barry, certainly Real been, City, been there for away. quite a while. Hey, been, and Moon Shadows, Moon Shadows move. Thea's been there They're for 30 years. That, 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 that's really impressive. You know, and right? she goes, she's kind of the unsung hero of our downtown. She yeah. stuck it out and through thick and thin yeah. and moved across the road. We just gave them a facade grant to really? redo the front of their building and upgrades and stuff. But yeah, Thea that's, a, that's a good, I've known Thea for, I never see her hard and hardly, but I've known her for more than 30 years. Yeah, but now that, she, that is impressive. She's hung in there. Yeah, no question. Oh my, very my wife point. brings, she draws a lot of customers yeah. in, you know. That's my wife good, and I went to a birthday party at City Hall. So yeah. we oh, went yeah. to City Hall for a birthday yeah. party. And I, I thought that was pretty neat. That yeah. place, that is really nice looking in there. Yeah, it came out very, very nice. Very good job. Yeah. How are you doing with Mark marketing City Hall for events like Bruce just mentioned? Almost Mark. every weekend. It's oh, got, if it's right? not a, we've had, we've got a wedding coming up, I think, really? in two weeks. At uh, City they, Hall. Yeah, at City Hall. Really? Wedding reception, yeah. They had oh. um, um, a shower. They have, it seems like a baby shower or a wedding shower, whether it's in the council room or in the auditorium, oh. almost every weekend. So... Yeah, again, it's, you know, we aren't charging an arm and a leg, and it's certainly yeah. not a profit center, but yeah. it's good to get people in and use the building, and yeah. we've got an automated access system to, that allows people, we can give a, issue a code, and they can punch their way into the building, and it yeah. deactivates at the end of the day, and so... I know you gave me a nice uh, tour there when, when the renovation was still going on. Boy, structurally, it sure seemed like a still a pretty solid building. It's amazing, and Bruce can certainly relate to this. To the, uh, the, when that building was built, they did it without the cranes. They did it without yeah. power tools, you yeah. know, and, and the quality of construction is, is that, unbelievable. Is that right? Oh, huh. yeah, unreal. It's the just like that, and, you know, yeah, the quality is just great. I mean, that, uh, when you go in, the first room to your left, it has a fireplace in it. Yeah. That thing is absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Uh, My wife went crazy about that. Yeah. We're working on getting a gas insert. We were originally going to put one in there as part of the renovation, but... A part put what in? A gas, a gas insert into the fireplace. So when oh, we rent yeah. it out or when we have meetings and stuff, you no, can... Yeah, that'd be, that'd be nice. Have a little ambiance and bring that the, building. The, the date the of that building, down. we're talking over 100 years old. 1896. Or? Okay, when when St Albans City became a city. Yes. Same year. Yeah. Yeah. 1896. Yeah. Boy, it sounds like that might might be good for another 100 plus years, maybe. Oh, definitely. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah. You know, the elevators. You know, the elevators were key to the uh, access uh, ADA compliance and everything. But we put an additional elevator in the back of the building for people coming mm -hmm. in using the auditorium. Bands can bring their equipment in through yeah. the back. And we have the uh, In Good Taste event there now. Every year, uh, the only year we didn't have it there was when it was going through renovations. Right. But again, the reception that the vendors showed there was, you know, they were very impressed and with the And speaking of which, probably should mention coming up, what, Saturday, a week from Saturday, the uh, Fine Wine, Beer and Food Festival yep. on, on Taylor Park. Nice, yep. nice event. And then 14 Star, I believe, is doing an Oktoberfest. Um, huh. there in the park as well. So again, 14th, the park's been getting, yeah. we had a great yeah, a good, turnout good for the, the summer park. concert. We, yeah. the summer concert series was fantastic. We yeah. didn't have to cancel one out every oh, Wednesday right? night. Um, it was beautiful yeah, weather. Everybody knew and then Snow Farm or Snow Farm does one on Thursday nights and they, uh, I think, canceled no, four. They had. So we ended up, we lucked out. Usually wake up to the WVMT guys. Charlie Papillo, yeah, of course, yeah. does his uh, pizza right. thing out there. And it right. seemed like about every other week they had a cancellation. Yeah, we were very fortunate. That's, that's a we good had, point. Wednesday nights were a lot better than Thursday nights. We had two or 300 people in the park every night. Um, you know, I had two uh, co-workers come in from Indiana. And the first thing they wanted to do at night was go to 14 Star. Yeah. They had that, heard about that right? Yeah. But you know, Richard, we talked a lot about the city and a lot of good things going on there. Yeah. Looks beautiful, good things happening, but yeah. 2018 is a year for the town. Hey. That's when we're going to kick it off. Yeah, of course, boy, you're run, you're unlucky with, uh, of course, the Bay Bay Day weather was uh, unfortunate this year. That's I guess. true. Yeah. yeah. And hopefully, you know. But it worked things, out with it, it on Saturday. To yeah. have, I thought that was a good idea because then Sunday was your rain day. That, that, that right. did make sense. It oh. gave you an obvious rain day. Because I went down actually late. I think I was out of town. I went down Saturday evening, mm -hmm. having not heard about the fireworks and quickly got the word, no fireworks. And at that point, it was just kind of cloudy and windy. I started walking out on the bay dock, which I often do. At that point, a downpour came. And that was uh, obviously a very good decision. 
And I yeah. went back down Sunday, so I guess I worked out okay. Yeah. We had, I mean, we had to. It was a tough call, but public safety first, you know. It, oh, sure. The thunderstorm was possible. I guess the big casualty time. was some, some or all of the great, great race. At least some got knocked out or... Kayak, I think. Yeah, the kayak, lake. kayak, kayak, kayak got knocked because out. of the lake. Did I hear that, maybe you mentioned this, Bruce, was there, was I hearing that the in the future the town wanted to have the... The, the handle on the kayaking, as opposed, was Coast Guard officially? Were they the ones? No, I, I think Bob uh, Bob Cross well, brought that up last year. Yeah. We Seems didn't like do that. Did, did and the chief bring that yes. up? Yeah. Maybe? Yes. Yeah. Yep. I think he wants. To, they want to make their calls on that next year. Correct. Yeah, I, think, I yeah. guess that's what we heard from an earlier. Can so. be a little more responsive. It's yeah. just tough because they they come from Burlington. Yeah. So yeah, they have to make the call early. Speaking of Chief Cross, anything to report on Town Fire Department? Anything of, of note to report on that front? Uh, we're con- well, we're continuing. There's a steering committee uh, working on um, looking at the consolidation of possibly the city and town fire department. Right. Thank member- you for mentioning that. There's members of the city yeah. um, call force and members of our volunteer force working together yeah. to on the details. So, I mean, we're at the conceptual stage here. We haven't, we don't have any proposed budgets, but we're looking at um, looking at some efficiencies for personnel and apparatus. Yeah. You know, you got the sense that there's forward momentum on that, Carrie? I do, yeah. I you do. Know, Bruce, you yes. certainly yep. have said you think that just seems like a very good idea. It is a good idea. It is a good idea. And uh, uh, forward momentum, yeah, it's there. Yeah, yeah it is. I mean, d- to look for efficiencies and what, and then that that's not really code, but we just need to look at where are we going to be in 20 or 30 years. Many, many communities are having a difficult time finding volunteers. Right. And also when you're talking about million dollar trucks, you know, do, yep. do we both need one? Probably yeah. not yep. long term, right? We don't, we could, we could share one because yeah. um, there's still mutual aid within the county. So that's, that's also an exciting venture that the committee's working really hard to, um, to get some forward progress on that. Marty, your thoughts on that? Good, good idea? Or are I, you? Yeah, I think that's a no-brainer. And yeah. Carrie touched on it with the equipment alone. You know, we, we probably yeah. don't need two ladder trucks. Yeah. But if, we bought, if the city bought a ladder truck and then the town maybe bought a pumper or something yeah. that worked off it, I think yeah. there's certainly some advantages to that. Yeah. Well, look, look how well the I think those guys work well together, too. Yeah. I mean, if they are working they well together now, which is why yeah. we think, you know, Maybe people don't know that, but if you ever come upon a scene yeah. in the city or the town yeah. right now, you're going to see red trucks and yellow trucks, yeah. and it makes no difference to the people fighting that fire or answering a call. So it's pretty exciting. Yeah, even at night, you know, when you go down for training, yeah. you go by the town yeah. fire department and you see the city trucks yeah. down there and the guys, yeah. and it's seamless to those guys. So. Yeah. City, city police department, Marty, close to full staff. How are you faring staff-wise with at the city point, PD? At this point, they're fully staffed. They've, Is that right? Uh, yeah. Um, they've, they've had a couple of officers, I think, in the academy and stuff that are going to be coming, coming out, but yeah. right now they're in good shape. So. And I know you, I think you made a significant pay hike for those folks a while back. You're certainly getting in the position of just kind of losing... You know, you train people, they'd be with city PD yeah. for a while. You'd lose them to a better paying department. That doesn't happen at least as much. No, it was, it was tough. It was a training facility for yeah. a lot of those guys. And that was all part of the yeah. fire department reconfiguration. And that was a heavy lift. And yeah. we were told in no uncertain terms that that wasn't going to work. And now other, yeah. now other communities are doing it. So, um, but it's allowed us to get qualified, better qualified uh, individuals into the police department. But... It's like anything, you know, you lose some, we, we lose some to state police, we lose some to yeah. customs and ICE and stuff, yeah. and, um, but we're, it, it's pretty easy to recruit too. So yeah. uh, we've got, I think, a pretty good system in place. We've got a respectful department that yeah. uh, a lot of people want to be part of, so it's helped out. So there are folks out there, I hear that same issue. We talked about the difficulty some communities are having finding volunteers, especially like for fire departments. Police, I'm, I'm hearing there are not a ton of folks out, a ton of potential younger would-be police officers out there, but you're still being able to... We're, uh, we're able to recruit from other departments uh, and stuff that... Uh, kind of turn the, turn the tables yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it's kind of switched a little, but it is tough. If you talk to, you know, Gary and... Yeah. The police have a tough, they get a lot of bad press, and those guys, yeah. uh, you know, a majority of them, a vast majority of them, yeah. are in it for the right reasons and yeah. doing the right thing. So yeah. we're, we're fortunate around here that we've got good officers, the state police, Mo, Mo, Her- or Mo uh, Lamont was at our council meeting Monday night. 
Can As you just say the state police yeah, commander? He's the commander of this barracks. He just stopped in just to, oh, really? you know, make himself aware and let the council know he was there. Here's the guy that's working yeah. all day long and spending three hours at a council meeting on a Monday night. That's you know, nice. he doesn't need to be doing you know, that. No, another so. law enforcement resource that we have that you don't hear much about very often, but they're always there, always willing to help is Border Patrol. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're right here in our backyard. I mean, yeah. they're very instrumental in getting the boat for the sheriff's department. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, Chief Pfeiffer <clears throat> is the chief for the, uh, what they call the Swanton sector. Yeah. And uh, really nice guy and always willing to help out. Those guys are yeah. always willing to see what they can do to lend a hand. No, that's yeah. a good the point. helicopter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, they, they, it. yeah. It's at our disposal, basically. Really? They've come to a couple of emergency yeah. management meetings and, explain the um, resources that they have available to us and really? they, they're just waiting to be asked to mm -hmm. use that stuff. So, I mean, they open there, they've lucky. got a, they got a multi-million dollar office in Highgate and they've got a lot of training equipment in there mm -hmm. and they open it to every law enforcement agency in the state of really? Vermont and out of the state. That's I mean, nice. you got, you got U.S. Marshals up there training, you got the yeah. sheriffs go up there for training mm -hmm. and, and local police departments. It's a great organization and I just wanted to put a word in for them because they're kind of like some un unsung heroes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Bruce, I was going to, again, the uh, city police covering the town, that still seems to be going well from a town Doing point a of view. It's working job. very well and, yeah. you know, to Marty mentioned the emergency management meetings as an example. The, yeah. sat, the reps from the town go, from the city. We have one yeah. meeting. We're all very familiar with each other. Yeah. Um, so it works really well. I, I guess to that point, we're also trying to initiate Vermont Alert. Um, Vermont Alert is that same system that people, I, do, I guess in the face of all this, all the damage in Florida and Texas, I just want to take the opportunity for my mini commercial to yeah. have people sign up for Vermont Alert. It's a system that the state uses for Amber Alerts. Um, they used it for that data breach this past weekend. Hmm. But you have to sign up. It's not some passive system um, that we can just alert everyone in town. I think a lot of times people think that we have access to all of their data. We do not. We do not have cell phone numbers, landlines. We don't know where you work. And we don't know where your email is. Mm. But if you sign up for Vermont Alert, we can tell you when we close a road. We can tell you if there's a mm. fire and you have to drive around. Yeah, or if yeah. we're changing a culvert and the road's going to be closed for a week. Um, good point, Carrie. So yeah. Yeah, we're trying to get point. people to sign up. And unfor unfortunately, sometimes people just zone out. I think we had 150 people sign up. That's, that's not enough to make a difference. Um, so is, this, is every community in the state doing this or is this? No, I mean, not every community, every community can, but is the city doing this. Marty, well, we have know? a, we have different a different, one. we have different a code red. System. Okay. It's called code red. It's an app that we've got that we've purchased okay. that same thing we have. Uh, anybody can sign up to it, whether okay. they're in the town or the city. Uh, we use it like if we had a water break or something like that, we would send out a notice okay. on code red. Um, more of an emergency based system, but yeah. it could be used for any So Carrie, for Vermont Alert, just call, and call the town or what should well, they do? We have, a we, we have it on our website and we have it on Facebook. Yeah. If, you d if you can't find it, let us know because we also have like a four page instruction, instructional play by play screenshots on how to sign up and you can choose how you want that information if you just want a text message or if you just want an email you don't want us calling your cell phone yeah. uh, you can start and stop them at any time but it's pretty useful for us mm -hmm. because it's very easy to zone in and out say if there was an evacuation order you can put a radius on a certain section of town you notify those people you mm -hmm. need to leave um, right now we'd mm -hmm. have to do it literally maybe knocking on doors very good. you know you talk about the police department there's a there's a prime example of how well shared service c services can work yeah. between the yeah. city and the town. Yeah. Sounds like after a, a bit of a rocky start, sounds like last few years, it's gone, gone pretty well. Oh, it's been it's very been successful. Very well. yeah. We're down to, I think, just a couple, couple of minutes if my watch is right. Marty, anything you want to quickly touch on that we haven't uh, talked about? No, we're, our projects are coming to a close. Our sidewalk and curb replacement is uh, finishing up with uh, Nason and uh, New and Gilman streets being the last three. This year we'll put out a notice on what ones are going to get hit next year. Federal Street is going to finish up here in the next month. The state is coming in to pave Lake and Lower Newton uh, on the 17th and then we're going to wait and do Main Street next year, next spring. So, Were you hoping to do Main Street this year or not? Well, V-Trans wanted to, but it was... Uh, it just didn't, uh, they, didn't work out? They're just, the weather certainly had an impact, but it was scheduling. So Main Street slash US 7 ne next year? Yes, yeah, by May 15th. If we're down to just a minute or two, one, one minute. 
Okay, thank you. I thought we were getting close to showtime. Mm -hmm. in, in a couple seconds, you want to mention oh, anything? I, just, we I would just like to encourage people to, to attend our select board meetings. Okay. The next one's on the 18th, starts at 6.30, and the community is certainly welcome to attend. Okay, Carrie, you want the last quick word? I, sure, yeah, I guess I could come up with something, but I guess... About 10 seconds. Yeah, the commercial for Vermont Alert is pretty important to okay. me. Public safety sometimes gets um, forgotten until that event happens, so... Very good. We'll leave it at that. Marty Manahan, the city's director of operations and business development. Kerry Johnson, the St. Albans Town manager. Bruce Cheeseman, the St. Albans Town Select Board Chairman. Thanks for guesting with us, Thank folks. You. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for Thank the you. time. Yep. Thanks for David, Zach, and Joanne for doing all the hard work out there. Thanks for our one call. Thanks for watching. We'll be back on our regular schedule with this show next month, Wednesday, October 4th. Thanks for watching us here on Northwest Access TV. For St. Albans Today, I'm Richard Coverthwaite. So long. Thanks. Mm -hmm.